get an M3 half track uh, rear track off in about 20 very hard steps let's go so as you can see the M3 half tracks rear track is uh, tensioned by this large spring we've put the rear axle off the ground so uh, all tension is off the what do you call them road, road wheels Bogey. So, bogey wheels, sorry. So now we're going to take off the tension by adjusting this nut and putting it all the way to the back. And I think it's left hand thread. I'm just going to turn around to make it easy for myself and put the light on the chassis. So with the nut of the spring tensioner completely backed up to the rear, as you can see on the outside, you have a small bit of movement in the track now. But this isn't enough. You need to lift up the boat wheel in order to get the thicker metal plane from under the carriage. So what we now need to do is unbolt the guide wheels and unbolt the rear half wheel in the outside and then we'll show you how to get it off. So, Kevin is jacking up the outer side of the bogey wheels, very important for correct naming. And on the inside we put wooden blocks so if we lower the jack again, it stays up so we can get the track out from under it. Here we see the wooden blocks supporting the bogies on the rear end and there's a similar one on the front end. So now Kevin is going to lower the jack onto the wooden block on the inside. As you can see, we now have a bit of free play with the axles, both front and rear. Now we come to the back. I've already taken off most of the screws that hold the back wheel in place. So we take off the rear wheel off with a hammer it is a bit tight it hasn't come off for a long long while ah there we go so that's one half off and now we take off the guide wheel in a few minutes. So, with the last 
bolt out. I'm going to push it towards Kevin. He's catching it, and as you can see, we've got a hell of a lot more slack on the track. And now, we're going to do an attempt on getting the track off, which isn't simple. I don't know if this is the correct way of doing it, but we got the other side off like this. What we do is we pull the belt towards us and we pull it outwards at the same time. Just beware of your fingers so they don't get caught in the sprockets. As you can see, it slowly creeps over to me. And now it's off. And now we've got a bit more room at the bottom. So if you push this like that, it should come out more. Now we get the front off. <coughs> Which requires heavy lifting. But if you need it. Quick. It needs to come over the sprocket, which it doesn't want to do. Yes. Yeah. And now, you let it rest on the top, and you pull the bottom out. And now it's off in one go. It wasn't easy though. Yeah. As you can see, you've got a piece of metal wire holding these two bolts in place. These bolts are actually just used to go and push against the hub assembly, which it then in its turn, once these bolts are all off, will push the drive shaft out. And that way you can remove the, the shaft because it's usually very sticky on the inside on this gasket. So this helps for that, but the Put it in with this wire so you don't lose the bolts and they're all, all, always ready available when you need them all the nuts removed um, we tighten the bolts a bit not too much so we don't strip the thread in the axle axle shaft and to nudge it out you just give it a bit of a tap and hopefully it comes out then been open for a very long time. Yes, it's coming. years later as you can see it starts to come out now Got a 
bit of oil. Oil? Yeah. And then the power went out. Is that wood fibre left in? So, with the bolt all the way in and the axle about an inch out, you put a bucket under it so the oil doesn't leak everywhere. And then, you carefully pull the underside and tap the top with a hammer until it's out. Here we have a complete half shaft and the bearing yeah. is for after the lunch break.